Hello everyone and thanks for joining us on today's webinar. My name is Emin. I'm an Alpha Application Engineer at EMWorks. So before we start, I would like to give you a brief summary about what we are going to discuss today. So first we'll talk about risk of cracks. Following that, NDT crack testing technologies will be presented. After that, we'll talk about the direction sensitive sensor, which is the topic of today's webinar. At the end, we have a live demo. So in case you have any question, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. So before we begin, I would like to give you a small introduction about EMWorks. Uh, EMWorks is a leading provider of electromagnetic simulation software for electrical and electronic designs from DC to millimeter wave frequencies. Our products are embedded in the most popular CAD platforms namely SOLIDWORKS and INVENTOR. They cover a very wide range of applications, ranging from electric motors, generators, transformers, and power electronics at the low frequency end of the spectrum, to antennas and wireless circuits and components at the high frequency end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, HFWORKS is an antenna and electromagnetic simulation software for RF, microwave, millimeter wave, and high-speed digital circuits. It uses state-of-the-art finite element solvers and machine technologies to compute fields as well as antennas and circuit parameters. It also comes with the integrated electrothermal solver. Now let's look at some of the risks of cracks. Metals are widely used in industry and they play a major role in transportation, agriculture, and military. Stress and environmental conditions can cause cracks which can result in a big engineering accidents. Probably you may have heard of the Siano Sushonskaya hydroelectric plant accident which happened in 2009 in Russia. The man-made disaster killed 75 people, damaged infrastructure, and seriously polluted the Unasai River. It took five years to restore the hydroelectric plant. The official report states that the accident was primarily caused by fatigue damage due to the turbine cover fastness. On the right, we can see a few images from the disaster. So let's look at some of the NDT crack testing technologies. Rank destructive testing has been playing a major role in ensuring quality control process in industry. This approach avoids destruction of the internal structure of the object and instead relies on the physics-based methods to identify whether internal defects are present. Non-destructive testing is represented by five general testing technologies. Radiographic testing, ultrasonic testing, magnetic testing, penetration testing, and eddy current testing. Uh, currently, conventional non-destructive testing techniques used for metal crack detection include magnetic testing, penetration testing, and eddy current testing. Each of these technologies has unique advantages and certain limitations. Magnetic testing can only be used to detect cracks in ferromagnetic materials. Penetration testing is used to detect cracks in metallic and non-metallic materials. However, it's not suitable for the detection of small cracks. Eddy current testing, or ECT for short, is one of the most important techniques in non-destructive detection. It can be used to determine whether a defect is present but cannot provide information on the shape or the size of the defect and can only detect cracks near the surface. Most conventional crack sensors are unable to determine the crack de direction. Therefore, there is a great practical need to develop a method that allows quantitative determination of crack orientations in metal. So on the right, we can see some few images demonstrating some of the NDT crack testing technologies. All right, now let's talk about the direction sensitive sensor, which is the topic of today's webinar. Uh, in the previous slide, 
You mentioned that most of the testing technologies are enabled to provide information about the direction of the crack. For instance, conventional single port microchip sensor, which is shown in figure one, cannot identify cracks which are parallel to the current direction. As a result, the resonant frequency will not change. A patch resonator with two feeding ports is proposed to improve the crack detection performance. So referring to figure two, JD, which is the displacement current, which is created by the electric field between the rectangular patch and the metal ground plane. And this can be regarded as a capacitance in the electric circuit model. Moreover, the conduction current, JC, can be considered as an inductance in the equivalent circuit. So, compared with the model in figure two, the conduction currents JC1, JC2, JC2 are excited along the boundaries of the crack due to this continuity on the metal ground plane. Additionally, a displacement current JD1, which is created between the two edges of the crack. Okay. So basically, those two currents gives an increase to the inductance and the capacitance, <coughs> which will decrease the resonant frequency, as we will see uh, in the upcoming slides. So the capacitance C prime is determined by the width, depth, and the direction of the metal crack, and this helps to identify the characteristic of the crack from the resonant frequency response of the uh, sensor. <coughs> so uh, uh, following our discussion in the previous slide, uh, on the right you can see uh, a direction-sensitive sensor. It has two feed imports, so it's simply uh, a patch. Uh, for the substrate, F4B, uh, the electric material, is used. The sensor operates from 1.5 GHz to 3 uh, GHz. The sensor has a length of 50 mm, width of 40 mm, and a thickness of 1 mm. Uh, some of the advantages of the sensor include simple structure, low profile, large coverage area, and high sensitivity, as you will see in the upcoming slide. Uh, today we'll be looking at the different crack configurations, namely vertical crack, horizontal crack, also crack at different orientation angles. So for the vertical and horizontal crack, we'll be looking at the effect of the crack width and the depth. So let's look at the the performance of the sensor without crack. So looking at the plot on the right, we can see that port one resonates at 2.4 gigahertz, while, while port two resonates at 1.95 gigahertz. Uh, looking at the magnetic field uh, plot on the left, we can see that the sensor has a large detection uh, area. So so let's look at the uh, frequency response of the sensor when there is a vertical crack. So looking at uh, the graph on the right, so we can see for port 1, <coughs> almost there is slight change in terms of the resonant frequency. And the reason for this, as we mentioned before, is that because the crack <coughs> is parallel to the current direction. so. So the port is unable to detect that cracks. However, for port two, so we can see there is um, there is a change. Also, we can see there is a decrease in the resonant frequency. And the reason for this is that because the crack is not parallel to the current direction. That's why the port is able to detect the crack. So also we can see that for small change of 
the width of the crack. So for instance, from point two to point four, the sensor is able to detect that small change in the crack. So it's very sensitive to the crack variations. Similarly for the vertical crack, but this case for crack with different depths. So we can see if there is a crack, let's say at a distance of 2.5, port one is enabled to detect that because of the current direction is being parallel to the, to the crack. Unlike port one, but for port two, it's able to sense the existence of the crack at a different depths. Also, it's sensitive to even small changes in terms of the uh, crack depths, as can be seen from the plot on the right. So let's look at the uh, the performance of the sensor when there is horizontal crack. So for port one, this time we can see there is a change in terms of the resonant frequency. And the reason again is because now the crack is not parallel to the current direction. Therefore, port one is able to detect the existence of that crack. However, for port two, there is almost no change in terms of the resonant frequency. And the reason again is because the crack is uh, parallel to the current direction. So now let's look at the the effect of changing the crack at different orientation angles. Ah, sorry. So, so we still we are still dealing with horizontal crack, but this time we are dealing with the depth effect. So looking at the looking at the return loss for port one, so we can see again there is a change in terms of the resonant frequency. So if there is small change in the depth of the crack, port one is able to detect that. However, port two is not able to detect that change because of the uh, of the crack being parallel the direction of the current. So now let's look at the effect of the crack at different orientation angles. So for this we'll be looking at different angles, namely 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 75 degrees. So looking at the return loss of both ports, so we can clearly see there is a change in terms of the resonant uh, frequency. And the reason for this now is because now <coughs> the crack is no longer parallel to both ports. So both of them are able to sense and detect the existence of crack. So now we have a live demo where we show you how to design and simulate such antennas using HFworks. Also, we'll walk you quickly through the, the software interface and show you some of the software capabilities. All right, so welcome again in this uh, live uh, demo. One of the main advantages of HFWorks is that it's fully embedded in uh, SOLIDWORKS, as you can see. So basically, you don't need to import your CAD geometry. Once you're done creating your geometry in SOLIDWORKS, you can just go ahead and start your simulation in HFWorks. So it's, as you can see, it's just simply uh, a tab. In HFWorks, we have uh, four types of studies. We have antennas, S-parameter, TDR, and resonance. So for example, you can use antennas to simulate antennas. For S-parameter, you can use it uh, to find the frequency response for 3D arbitrary uh, passive uh, RF microwave and millimeter wave components. Uh, also, we have the TDR. You can use it to find uh, discontinuities in, in interconnects. Also, we have the resonance study, which can be used to find the <coughs> multiple resonant modes or eigenfrequencies. Uh, like any other electromagnetic uh, simulation softwares, we have three main steps. First, we need to specify the frequency range, apply material, and assign the uh, boundary conditions. 
So first, let's start with the frequency. So under the frequency settings, so for example, you can specify the type of accuracy, whether it's normal or high. Also for the frequency sweep, we have different uh, types of sweep. We have discrete sweep. So basically for this, you are solving at each uh, frequency point. While for fast sweep, you are solving for particular frequency and interpolating for the rest of frequencies. Once you have single point, if you have frequency <coughs> points in a file, you can also import them. Uh, so for this sensor, so the start frequency is 1.5 and end frequency is 3 uh, gigahertz with uh, 101 frequency points. For the meshing, we have the manual mesh. So for example, if you are an experienced user and you know what exactly in the structure, you can apply mesh control. Otherwise, you can use the adaptive mesh. So basically the software will try to find the, the appropriate mesh for your uh, design. Also, we have the electrothermal solver. So in case if you're interested in studying the temperature distribution. Next is applying the material. In HFWorks, we have uh, our material library, which consists of uh, a predefined material, as you can see here. Uh, also, we have uh, a material from different uh, vendors, uh, such as, for instance, here, Rogers, different materials from Rogers, and also uh, Mitsubishi. So to uh, edit the material properties, you simply right click, you said edit material. So you can uh, edit different material properties, such as permittivity, loss tangents, conductivity, uh, etc. Next, we need to assign the boundary conditions. So for boundary conditions, we have different boundary conditions. We have uh, a wave port or port, lumped port, lumped element, PEC, PMC, uh, PEC symmetry, PMC symmetry, of also the radiation boundary. So use this one when you're studying, for example, antennas. Also have signal for uh, TEM mode. So also, for example, if you decide to go with the manual mesh, sometimes you want to apply some mesh control in certain areas of your structure. So to do that, you simply right click on mesh control and you say apply mesh control. So we can apply mesh control on bodies, faces, or edges. Also, you can specify the uh, element size. So before moving to the results, let's look at our structure. So this is basically our sensor, which has two ports. So this is uh, port one, as you can see, and this is uh, port two. And also we have the radiation boundary. So to see that, so you can see our radiation boundary. Maybe I can hide it for now. Uh, so, so for this case, we have no crack. So to verify that, so maybe we need to hide. So you can see there is uh, no crack. All right, so now let's look at some uh, simulation results. In HFWorks, we have what we call the uh, results table. So under this table, you can see different circuit parameters, such as generalized ace matrix, renormalized ace matrix, impedance matrix, admittance matrix, uh, different port results. Uh, VSWR. You can also uh, print versus current frequency or frequencies. Uh, also, you can export results to different formats, such as text, CIT, SPC, or touchstone. So you can see, for example, now for our sensor, since we have two ports, so we have S11 and S22. So port, for example, port 1, it resonates at 2.4, while port 2, it resonates at almost 1.95 uh, gigahertz. So to plot, you simply right click. So we have two kinds of plots. We have 2D plot and Smith plot. So for 2D plot, so for example here, which is uh, what study, so we have with, uh, with 
without crack and the parameter type what is s parameter vsw or other parameter so for example for this for now let's choose s parameter so now we choose let's say s11 said add and also s22 also you can all all the you can also add all the parameters at once by clicking at all so now we can see uh, the graph Uh, also, we have uh, another type of plot, which is a Smith plot, for example, S22. So, you can see the uh, Smith plot. Also, we have another uh, type of results table, which is called uh, Antenna Far Field Results Table. So, under this table, we can see different antenna parameters, such as uh, directivity, uh, gain, radiation efficiency total efficiency again you can uh, print or also you can export uh, versus different uh, formats uh, also for for example if, if you have antenna study we have uh, a 2d plot as you can see and also we have the 3d polar plot so let's look at other results so also we have the electric field so for this probably now we need to show substrate part so so we have for electric field we have different formats we have uh, fringe vector streamline point 3d mesh so let's change fringe for now so to animate you simply right click says animate versus phase Uh, maybe I can do it once again. Yeah, so now uh, right click, said animate. So now you can see the animation of the electric field. Similarly, for magnetic field, we'll do the same thing. So again, if you want to animate, you say right click animate versus phase yeah so let's look at the uh, the vertical crack so this is one of the studies so for material so to see the crack we do need to hide this so now we can see the you can clearly see the crack so for this we wanted to see for example the effect of the width for this we use the parametric study so here we have uh, our design scenarios <coughs> so for parameterization it's uh, pretty easy so if you go under antennas you choose parameter and then, for example, we choose this one, so we can see that the this is the the width we're trying to parameterize. Also, if you want to see uh, geometry for each scenario, so you go to parameterization. You say display geometry. Let's say for example, zero point four. Yeah. So now we can see, and also it's same thing if we go for let's say one so you can clearly see the change in the width uh, also we have uh, the uh, return loss so for this we have a return loss for different uh, width values so for this you simply uh, right click again so to the plot and vertical different width so we can specify uh, what scenario this one or two whatever so for example if i put all so all of them will be added so as you can see <coughs> similarly for uh, the this is <coughs> also for the depth okay so for this one so now this is the depth 
also you can parameterize the depth so now let's look at the uh, horizontal crack so you can see now the horizontal crack so this is a uh, different results so let's look at the uh, the crack at different orientation angle so this for example 15 degrees so we can see S11 for different orientation angles so as you can see that the uh, the design simulation of uh, the center is uh, pretty easy Uh, Alright, so here comes the end of the uh, live uh, demo. So to sum up, you have learned about the working principle of the direction sensitive sensor and some of the advantages and some of its advantages as compared with other NDT testing methods. We have showed you how easy HFOX is in designing and simulating microwave sensors. With that, I would like to thank you. Goodbye.